I really do love how the most inspired ideas come to me at exactly the right time. This morning, good morning, if you're in my part of the world, or good afternoon, or good evening. This morning, I had an idea about what I was going to talk about for Try It Out Tuesday. And it wasn't really originally what I was thinking of, but it seemed like a really good idea. And then I was reading my book. So right now, I'm in the middle of two books. One, I'm physically reading the book Untamed by Glennon Doyle, which my fantastic sister-in-law gave me, Joanna Barrington. Thank you so much. Sorry, it took me so long to start reading it. I like can't get enough of it. Um, and another book that is called The Miracle Equation, which is also incredible. I'm listening to an audio book. But every morning I read for 20 minutes. And this morning I came to a chapter called Racism. And I was like, hmm, I mean, we're halfway through the book, you can see. And I'm thinking, that's an interesting place for this, no, racists it's called. It's an interesting place. And it wasn't related to the previous chapter at all. So I was intrigued. And if you know me, if you know me well, you know that anti-racism has been a passion seems like the wrong word but really a passion of mine for years like since I was a preteen as long as I can remember I can remember hearing the injustices picking up on them uh, you know from my family like my extended family when I was a kid and and it just oh reaching me the wrong way so from way back then but life kind of happened and so anyways today I dropped things for a while I'll fully admit um today I was reading and Glennon was talking about her reading about some uh civil rights movement fighters back in the days of Martin Luther King and realizing her daughter asked her like, hey, there's a white woman. Would we have been walking with them? And she said, yes, of course we would be walking with them. And then her other daughter said, no, we wouldn't. We're not even walking now. And that really hit me because it felt like she was talking about when uh, kind of, uh, uh, she talked specifically about the Trayvon murder and the murder of, you know, when the white man went into the church and killed all the black people, that was what she was referring to. But it's that same timing around George Floyd, um, when the world was awakened to all the shit that's been going on all this time, but all of a sudden the world was awakened to it. And that was a reawakening for me. And so as I read her chapter, I want to share a few of the things. And for Try It Out Tuesday, I'm specifically talking to the liberal white people here. It doesn't mean nobody else is going to get value out of it, but if you are already woke, then this may not be for you. If you are a member of the BIPOC community, this may not be for you. Although perhaps you want to listen to, you know, just be supportive or perhaps you are a member of the BIPOC community who, um, oh, what's the term? Oh, I've forgotten. Anyways, it, you're welcome. Everyone is welcome to listen, but I'm speaking specifically to my liberal white friends, colleagues, followers here. If that is you, let me in here. So, Glenn and I'm going to read some parts of her book, and she she talks about a Martin Luther King essay, the letter from Birmingham Jail, and she she quotes a part where it says he said, "I must confess that over the last few years I've been gravely disappointed with the white moderate. I've almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block in his stride toward freedom is not the white citizen's counselor or the Ku Klux Klanner." but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice, who prefers a negative peace, which is the absence of tension 
to a positive peace, which is the presence of justice, who constantly says, I agree with you in the goal you seek, but I cannot agree with your methods of direct action. And it was at that point that Glennon realized like, wow, that's me. And I don't feel exactly like that's me, but there are definitely pieces that I could relate to. Because when I did go on the march that was created, I, oops, when I did go on the march that was created, um, right back after George Floyd, uh, they were talking about defunding the police. And I was like, I'm not sure I can support that. But it's true, I could I wasn't sure I could support it because I hadn't done enough research. And so this is a journey of unbecoming, of unlearning what you know, because you, we, all of us, every single one of us, is raised in a society that benefits white, wealthy, cisgendered, straight men. And until you are ready to recognize that and recognize that we have unlearning to do, there won't be any significant change in you. So she went on to say, and these are things that just kind of um, got it from me. She went on to say, I felt exhausted because so, she started to read about anti-racism and that, that mirrors a lot of what I've been doing and I've been thinking that my reading isn't enough and I wanna know what more to do. And so I reach out to my strong black female friends that I have. I'm so blessed to be in a tribe where I'm the only white person. And so I reached out to them, but I realized that's not fair. They're not there to educate me. They're there undergoing their trauma and living their trauma every single day. And so if they are willing to help me, that's fantastic, but it is not their job to bring me into the right space. It's my job. It doesn't mean that you can't reach out. It means you can't expect. And you have to be aware of your privilege when you're asking and humble enough to hear a no with love. So she comes to talk about that later. But So she'd been reading and doing a lot of things. And she said, I felt exhausted because there was so much more to unlearn, so many amends to be made, and so much work to do. And I feel like, for me, it's gonna be a never-ending journey. I am so blessed that I've been our equity lead and able to hear so many strong anti-black racism leaders speaking. Um, and, and learn about books to read and I've, I've learned so much and am unlearning so much, but there is so far to go. So I am so proud to use the term becoming anti-racist. And I think I'll always be using that term because I don't think there's an end point, or at least I can't see the end point yet. And I know that my journey is very long and it is arduous, but who cares? Like. What I go through is minuscule. What we as white people go through is minuscule. This suffering, this pain, minuscule compared to the trauma of the BIPOC community. And we need to recognize that and realize that it's time for us to go through some pain. Like we need to, or we're not going to be able to heal anything or anyone. The whole, Glennon says, about something else that the whole family has to be ready to unlearn in order for the healing to begin. And this is our human race family. So she also says she feels like in her early days of waking up to white supremacy, she felt shaky, jumpy, and agitated as uh, she slowly surrendered the privilege of not knowing it was a painful unbecoming. So it will be. If you are not there and you haven't started, it will be. I'm going to tell you straight up. But again, like, that's how it has to be. And that's more than okay. Um, she talked about how, you know, if people say no to you, if you go to 
expert voices to people you trust in the BIPOC community and they're saying no to you or they're standing in their truth and it sounds like, oh, why are people pushing me away? I'm trying to do good and all I'm doing is getting hurt and pushed down. No, they are just speaking their truth and we need to hear it with an open heart. She says the truth feels like an attack because we have been protected by comfortable lies for so long. I'm going to repeat that because I was like, bah, yeah. That truth feels like an attack because we have been protected by comfortable lies for so long. We've fallen into the trap of believing that becoming racially sober is about saying the right thing instead of becoming the right thing. That showing up is based in performing instead of transforming. And so here today, thank you Glennon for those words. Here today, I commit to, as she said, I've already been curating my feeds and social media to add amazing, strong BIPOC leaders. But she does something that I'm gonna start, is to every day start with looking at their feeds first. Because our feeds, which are filled with white, whiteness, they're not showing us reality. So I commit to looking at non-white feeds first to learn and unlearn what really is. To learn what really is and unlearn what we thought it was. That is my commitment. I acknowledge that I will make mistakes as I go, but I will not stop speaking my truth. And so that very long, if you have made it to the end, thank you for listening. It's such an important um, topic. I didn't feel I could do it any justice by being shorter. I'm sure I could go on longer. Um, but I want to say that if you don't know how to start, um, I do have some resources. I could point you in a direction. You can, I'm happy to have you join me on my journey and we can go through this together. Becoming anti-racist. That is what I suggest you try out. Not just on Try It Out Tuesday, but for the rest of your life. I love you. I'm here. We are all in this together, like all of humanity. I stand even though I cannot understand. And I will do my best to learn and learn and learn. Keep growing. Have a great day.